I, I trust you had a wonderful night. Amen. All glory to God. It's good to see you all, wherever you're watching from. Praise the Lord. Oh, I trust that your yesterday was splendid. Amen. And today will be even much better. Amen. Let's thank God for today. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. I lift every man, every woman, oh God, under the influence of my voice. And Lord, I just lay them at your feet, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you, O oh God, will touch them in a special way today. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you know where they need you most today, O oh God. Even as the word comes, Lord, your word is sharper than two-edged sword. Let it touch every marrow. Let it touch every bone. Let it deliver, O oh God. Specifically, O oh God, that, O oh God, which will catapult them into the realm where they should be. And for those of us, O oh God, who are rising, Father, who enable us, O oh God, to stay our mind set on that which you have already done. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, have your way. I take authority over every power of the air. I bind you and I say, get out from this environment. Get out from this atmosphere. Holy Spirit, fill this atmosphere right now with your presence. Yes, oh God. Let your anointing speak. Libra Kazagadush. Lord, speak for we hear you, O oh God. And therefore, I pray that the eyes of our understandings, O oh God, are opened. Our minds are ready and receptive to you, O oh God. And Lord, today, O oh God, we will receive, O oh God. And as we receive, O oh God, we will be that which we have received. O oh Lord God, not just, not just for us, O oh God, we will be blessed. <laughs> and we will go out to oh God being a blessing. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is doing marvelous things. And he will never stop. Praise the Lord. Regardless of what or what is not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, child of God, just hang in there. It's all happening for your good. Amen. All things are definitely walking and navigating towards you for good. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, we continued with our text, and we're going to hopefully conclude our text today. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy, if you have it, just go there. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our morning command destiny command amen god told us that whatever he hears us say that is what he's gonna do and whatever we allow on earth god bless you god bless you my sister whatever we allow on earth he will allow so we have a huge responsibility we have a huge part to play amen what do i mean let me just give you a scenario take for example um you 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 are you you've been looking for a job amen and um, an organization decided to take you amen you know when you're looking for that job you're excited you're like you know you all your energy is focused and geared towards getting this job you really want this job bam 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 and you're doing everything you know to get this job even you're making some contact you know adding value to yourself pushing up yourself and then finally you got an interview wow you make sure you're well dressed you're ready mentally physically emotionally you go there and you want to put out your best then you got there finally and the exact the, uh, the the interviewer you know looked at you and after all the questions and everything you were told that hey congratulations you got the job wow with that excitement you jump into the job and like you know what you want to give your best you want because you know you have like three months usually they give you three months amen to watch you to see if you're really really what you said you are amen so what do you do? You put in your best, you know, your best attitude, your best work ethics, and you just give it your best. And as you are giving it your best, they are watching you and everything. 
And finally, finally, three months came and you were declared good enough. You know, like we now know that you are what we are looking for. They give you now, they now give you your package. And in that package, I want you to listen very clear. I'm just giving you a scenario of what we're doing. Amen. You know, in that package, you have benefits, you have this, you have that, medical covering, you have, you know, um, accident covering, you have, uh, uh, sometimes you even have life insurance included in it. You know, so all these beautiful benefits are there. You could go for massage, you could take care of your eyes, you could do so many things that on your own if you go doing them will cost you a lot of money so here you have all these benefits and you're enjoying these benefits you know what usually happen in life you know after that three months finally maybe in six months you know give it six months you just relax you relax now you know your job now you feel oh you know i know how to do what i'm supposed to do now you've acclimatized you know it's no longer as exciting as it was at the beginning so you just you know just slow down and just you know just ease yourself into the routine of the job and all your mind is on the what benefit so what are you doing you know you're just working just to get your your, your 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 paycheck and again to get your benefit but that is not just the reason why you are employed this is like being a christian the first time you come to god you were all excited life begins to give you a new meaning you came down you came you know you know with a low spirit and god stirred you up you came sick, you got healed. Because God always uses something to welcome you, to tell you, like, there is hope here. I am your daddy. I am your mommy. You know what? From now on, I take you off from here. So when that happens, you know, you begin to receive benefits. You see all the goodies that, you know, all the packages of Christianity. Amen. Some of us have come, you know, hopeless and we got hope. Some of us came sick, we got healed. Some of, God, of us came single, we got married. Some of us came barren, we got children. You see, some of us came with challenges in our career and our career blossomed. Some of us came, you know, needing this, needing that, wanting this. And all those things, as we come in, we're giving. So our attention is now on the benefit. You see, all your attention are on the benefits. But you see, like I use the scenario of a job because I know it will help you, you know, understand when we talk about the kingdom of God. And the reason why I am giving you this teaching is not that I see if I can, you guys know that I pray, I pray. <laughs> it's not so I cannot come here and just like bang, 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 pray, pray, pray. But you know, that wouldn't help you because that is what you've been doing in the church. Before this pandemic, before this pandemic, we all go to church. We listen to the pastor preach. And we're waiting for that time when the pastor is going to pray for us. We go to church and we feel good. <clears throat> we listen to the worship team and they sing us to excitement and to, you know, and then everybody's excited and then the message comes. Most times we're not even waiting for the message. We're just waiting for the music and then the prayer. Amen. You see, and that has, you know, Distunted your growth. Distunted your growth that in the sense that you, 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 you didn't understand the mechanism, the structure, the, 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 the whole essence of you being in church. And that is what I'm trying here by the Spirit of God to let you understand the reason why you are born again and what it means for you to be born again and how to navigate your life as a child of God and how to keep moving when we say I'm moving up higher and higher you know and so so some people feel oh I'm not moving higher and higher when we talk when I when I pray for you and I said and I said to you your life is going from one level of glory to another you know I want you to understand it because you have to first of all be it here before you can be it completely outwardly. So when you get to God, what did you do? You started focusing on the benefit. What are the benefits? The benefits are those needs. 
that you experience. Those needs that, you know, your Christianity got for you at the beginning. So the benefit are healing. The benefit are restoration. The benefit are, are deliverance. The benefit are success. The benefit are abundance. The benefit, you know, they are numerous. The benefit are, 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 are eternal life. The benefits, you know, they are all love, peace, joy, all those things. These are benefits. The benefit are those blessings, you know, that you, you get when you pray. You know, those, those are benefits. These are not the reason why you're born again. When you focus on the benefit, you lose focus on what the organization really stands for. Like when you got that job, you got so, you know, so, so entangled, so sold out to all the benefit and the money the organization is going to pay you. That is not the reason why you are there. And that's why people keep changing, you know, changing jobs or keep, <clears throat> you know, keep, you know, keep, you know, they get tired, you know, they just go to work, you know, like, you know, tired and they, they, they lose the excitement of working or going to work or doing their business or whatever, because your attention is in the wrong place. So, because the way a, a human is wired, you're wired, you know, to, you know, to, to, to get excited about something. And then when you get that thing, when that thing, you feel that that thing is yours, you relax. It's, it's a normal human nature. But once you are born again, you should cease to see yourself as a, a normal human being. <laughs> I'm not saying you, you are abnormal. You cease, you, 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 cease, you cease to see yourself as just a, 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 a human born of blood. Born again means you're born from above. You're born of God. Because if you don't get this, all I'm teaching you will still be difficult for you to practice. Because I'm bringing you to the realm where you should be all these years that you've been a Christian. And the realm where you should be, even if you're getting born, if you're getting born again now, if I'm if I'm if I'm gonna lead you to Christ now, that is where you should dwell. Because when Jesus said that they may be one as we are one, what he's talking about is to be single-minded. Single-minded, to have your mind, have your mind single, one with his mind. Because until we have our mind single. In oneness with who God is, we'll keep having problems. What I'm saying is this. You know, being born again doesn't mean that you're not going to face challenges. It doesn't mean that you're gonna, the devil is not going to come at you. One thing you should know, once you're born again, expect the devil at your door. Yes. Expect, be, you know, just know that the devil is going to come at you. As long as the word of God has permeated you, you have the word of God in you, you are a child of God, you are set on this path that you must follow, you know that, oh, you really want to serve God. He's going to come after you. But like I always tell us here, it's all for good. Because if the devil can look at Jesus Christ and run after him <laughs> and kept at him, after tempting him, he still tested him and tempted, te uh, tempted him through the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they kept testing him with questions. And the, at the end of the day, the devil still permeated, went through, oh my goodness, went through his disciples, not just one, because it wasn't only uh, Judas, no, even Peter. Because there was a time Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, be careful. The devil has set you up to totally destroy you. He said, but I prayed for you. So the devil was not resting. So don't expect to have it all, oh, sweet, smooth, and sincerely. You know, because I noticed something. Whenever, you know, it, we, we, we come to God and things are good and, oh, we are there. You know, everything is there. But once we feel comfortable, we, we relax from doing what we are supposed to be doing. We relax. And many you relax. What happens is that you let off your guard. Because whenever you're active, actively active with God, the angels are backing you up. The anointing is working for you. The blood is speaking for you. Why? Because you, once you're active with God, your mind, 
Oh, Kalabazagados, your mind is becoming synchronized and syncopated. And the angels, remember, the angels are servants. So they are watching you. So as you do with God, so they do with you. Your, 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 your responsibility, amen, shows them that, yes, they are also, they, they, they should be responsible to you. So you, the more... You, the, the, the more you, 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 you the, 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 the more you work with God, the more you are actively involved in that which God has betted you for, because you are not born again because of the benefits. Oh, Kaya Bandi, because the benefits should be following you. Let me give you a scenario. I think I, this this should be what is going to be today. Amen. Remember yesterday we zoomed into self-discipline. I'm now giving you the reason why you should be self-disciplined. The reason why you should be self-disciplined is to get yourself to be single-minded. Let me just read it for you so that before I continue because of time. Amen. It says be self to have a well-balanced mind and self-control. Now single-mindedness is for you to be balanced. Your spirit, your soul, knitting together with God's purpose and plan for your life. You see, your spirit, your soul, coming together with the spirit of God. Your spirit got born again. Your soul was not born again. Your body was not born again. Because if you don't get it, wherever things go wrong in your life, you think God has forsaken you. Whatever you don't get what you want, you're like, oh God, you start praying the prayer of an unbeliever. Father, ha, Father, have mercy on me. Father, help me. Father, do it again. Father, no, that is not the prayer of a Christian. That is a no-no for a Christian. If you listen to my prayer language, if you listen to me, if you've been with me for years, you will know that this has been my, my phronesis. This has been my language. Is my conjugation. That is my that is my meditation. This is what I process every day. This is how I process the word of God. Amen. Because the word of God cannot be separate from me. And God is not separate from me. He lives in me. I'm a God carrier. You are a God carrier. You carry eternity wherever you go. You carry divinity wherever you go. God is not far away. So it's just like you uh, asking your okay, your body, telling you know, telling your body, my body, please now. Help me. No. You tell your body what to do. You see. So back to what I'm saying. Yesterday we talked about being disciplined. The discipline is to be able to align yourself. Because you are the one to do it. The power to do it is already released. Amen. The help you need is here. As long as God has sent you a pastor, a prophet, you have the, the help you need. He said he give gifts to men. And he said go into the world. He now sent me to you. He said, go teach them. He didn't say, oh, he didn't say pray for them. He said that they, oh, Kabbalah Zagadish, that you may become one. That you may become a disciple. So the reason why you are listening to me is to become. And because what, once you are one with what I am saying, what I am delivering to you, once you begin to get it, praise the Lord, your life will begin to align to that which you already are in your mind. Glory to God. I hope you're getting blessed. I hope this is working for you. Oh, this is so important. The devil is not going to back off. There's going to still be that moment. There's still going to still be challenging moment. As long as you're physically in this world, you're going to have trials. You're going to be tempted over and over again. And temptation, it's not an announcement that God has rejected you. Trials are not an announcement that you have failed. It's called trial. That means it's a test. You could be going through a downturn in your life now. Spiritually, emotionally, financially, maritally. But God is saying, you have received power. Remember our scripture. He said, God has not given you fear. So you're not supposed to be afraid when you're tested. Don't think that pastors and prophets that come to you, they don't have issues. They have more issues than you do. Because you know what? They are covering you. You see? So the devil is more after the pastors and the prophets than they are after you. You see? But God has not given you the spirit of fear. 
He has not given you the spirit of timidity. He has not given you the spirit of cowardice. Because it's only a coward that runs when there's a battle. You stand. <laughs> you know why you will stand? It is not by your might. You remember, the scriptures are there for us to learn from. I take my cue. Whenever I find myself in a situation, I run to the Bible. I want to know. I go back. Who went through similar things? Even if they, nobody has gone through what I've gone through, how did somebody that went through a situation, it, it, it could even be life-threatening. It could be life-threatening. We saw the person, I will always use the person of Hezekiah. We saw the person, we saw Daniel in the lion's den. Come on, brothers and sisters. Have any of you been thrown into the lion's den before? It is for your learning. Even if you're locked up in a prison, yes, you committed that crime. We know. But you came in when you got there, it hit you that, wow, I shouldn't have done this. And you truly repent. My brother, my sister, even in that prison, God will open doors for you. Things will change. But you have to understand that the one with you is greater than your situation. That the one with you is bigger than the circumstance. That the one with you is major majority. That the one with you is the answer to this particular situation. That the one with you is not, does not sleep nor slumber. But the problem is that you don't even know why you are a Christian. You don't even know why you got that job. Remember, I use a job scenario to explain this to you. You don't even know why you are in the organization. Like now, I know why I am where I am. Because every day, I see people, my colleagues, their lives are daily being impacted. That is my number one duty. To be a light. To be a solution. To be an answer. In that organization. My, the, the reason why I am employed is to add value to the organization. You see? The reason why you are born again is for you to add value to the kingdom of God. To increase the kingdom of God. Is it making sense? So to you, for you to navigate to the, you know, to that realm where you, where the world will begin to recognize you in where you are. Like now, I am, I, I am, I'm working. I can't tell you I'm working because of that money because that's the least. I, the least. I, I, in fact, if I, if I look at my qualifications, I'll just like, I'll begin to cry. In fact, I would throw myself on the floor and like, God, why? Oh, no. No. You see, that wasn't why I, where I God, God allowed me to be there. God allowed me to be there because of what I am seeing. What is happening? The lives that are being touched. The, you know, the changes that people are getting born again. Those that are born again, they are waking up. They don't even know why it, what it means to be born again, you see. Those that are not born again, they are not beginning. They now know who I am. They know, they can tell who, without me being there, they know who Hilda is. Some of, the, some of, the, some of them don't even know I'm a pastor. But they can tell you, they can, they can describe me now. You see. You have to be distinct. You have to be different. You don't have to, when you get into a place, you should add value to wherever you are. So as a Christian, you're born again to be an increase and to increase the kingdom. You see? So when God says, be single-minded, he says, be one mind with my purpose for sending my son, Jesus Christ. Because until you're that, I'm telling you, the devil will be whipping you left, right, and center. <laughs> until you begin to, you know, to get conscious of why God saved me. Because ask yourself, what exactly did you do that brought you, that, that made God, you know, you know, bless you so much so far? What was it that you exactly did? What did you exactly do? What did you do? Can you tell me what you did for God to save you? Just confession. But Jesus died. You see, he shed his blood. He lost his life. He allowed himself to be shamed. He was rejected. Rejected. Several times. To the, even at the point of death, his apostles, they rejected him. But yet, he was single-minded with what the Father has sent him to this world to do. And at the end of the day, he is the only, he's the only person
person on earth who has been raised bodily, raised bodily from death, raised, raised. That, that, that means nobody raised him. Other people, they pray for him. People are praying. Nobody prayed for Jesus. He's the only person, and if his resurrection did not wow you, he's the only person that left this earth, levitated bodily into the heaven while people were watching. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a secret. You see, he was never distracted. In pain, he walked. And he said it at some point. He said he, he does not even think, he doesn't even accommodate the praise of man because the praise of man is nothing, is is vain. When men praise you, be very careful. Praise the Lord. So you have to understand why did God save me? Why did Jesus come? And when Jesus came, why did God save me? So when I talked about talents and gifts, some of you responded, some of you did not respond. It's all you, it's, you see, in the same way. When the word of God comes, some people respond, some don't respond. In the same way. I said before you, life and death. And that was the reason why God asked me to do that. I did it. Because one, if you understand, and if you don't understand and you got to me, like, thank God that is, to do, for those of you who got back to me, God bless you, and I, I'm sure you are happier. It makes things clear. It helps you mount guard over your heart. That you become conscious. Consciously conscious of who God is. The one who is with you. Daniel went into the lion's den. Not because he was a hero. No, because he knows that he belongs to a hero. You see, he didn't cry. Oh, no, no, no. He just, what he's been doing. He continued doing it. He didn't pray because he went to the lion's den. He was praying. He was serving God. It was his, it was his resolve to stand for God that threw him, that brought him into the lion's den. You see what I mean? David already had the mind, had, had that mind before he confronted Goliath. Goliath didn't go after David. David went after Goliath. So when you, if you, like Paul said, he said, if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is weak. That means you're a weak person. Just like you went to school and on the day of exam, you decide to be absent. That means you're already a failure. The teacher didn't fail you. Praise the Lord. So that is what I'm saying. No matter how many times the devil came at you, you have to keep doing what you were doing all these years and get better at it because your focus is to add value to the kingdom. Your focus is to increase the kingdom. Your focus is to enlarge the kingdom. How? By you being blessed and being a blessing. Glory to God. Not just my name is Jimmy. I have come. Give me. I receive. Oh, Father, praise you. Oh, the Lord has done it again. Who have you? When did you do? What? When are, when are you? When are you going to give the angels something to talk, talk about? When are you going to cause heaven to stand still and say, wow, this is my son, this is my daughter in whom I am well pleased? You see, because when that happens, things will begin to change. The way you see things will change. Then you cannot understand my phronesis. You cannot understand, you know, where I'm coming from. And then you can journey with me. To that higher ground. You can journey with me in this realm of the supernatural. Then to receive a miracle would become easy for you to receive. For you to receive, you know, blessings, you know, answers would be easy. Because like I keep telling us. It is <laughs> most of the things that God, you, you know, that you see in your life that God has do or does for you. Is not because of how thunderous your prayer is. Mm -mm. He said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on. But in the time of ignorance, you're going to be receiving things. Things are going to, because then you're still ignorant. But there comes a time when God says enough of your ignorance. 
Mm -hmm. And he's going to tell you, pick up your mat and walk. That's what God is saying to you today. Be single-minded. Get your mind back to what matters. You are blessed to be a blessing in this kingdom. Praise the Lord. You are blessed to be a blessing in this kingdom. My illustration with the workplace, I know has helped you. Don't focus on the benefits. The, bless, the blessings are for you. But when you focus on them, you begin to eat the crumbs. Trickles. You just be getting once in a while, you will receive this. Once in a while, you will receive. Even if nothing is happening that you can sense with your with your with your five senses, things are happening in the realm of the spirit. When the cloud be full, it will begin to pour. Align yourself. Be single-minded. What it means, be well balanced. Have a balanced mind. Be one with your father in your mind. So the words that I have shared with you and I'm still sharing with you, like this scripture, the reason why I bring it to you, so it's to give you something to think about during the day. As you go through your day, as you go through your morning, as you go through your evening, you have something to, to fall back at. And this scripture, this verse 7 of 2 Timothy chapter 1 that we shared is a power scripture, is a power verse. It's so loaded. Now you know what God has not given you. You know what God has given you. You see, he didn't say God will give you. He said God has already given you. You see, but if you are Focus on what God is giving. You will lose out on the big picture. I'm going to conclude this by his grace tomorrow. So that by Friday night, when we hit, when, when our knees hit the floor, boy, you will see that your life will take a different turn. Your spiritual life will take a different turn. Praise the Lord. You're not a stranger in the kingdom. You're not a visitor in the kingdom. You are the child of the most high God highly esteemed, highly favored, blessed beyond the cause. So, for those of you who have not said yes to Jesus, before I pray today, I want to ask you, my brothers and my sisters, what are you waiting for? Even if your life, spiritually, almost financially, emotionally, even if everything seems to be going well in your life, have you ever thought Of the life after this physical realm. If nobody has ever told you the truth, let me tell you the truth. There is life. Life does not end here. After this physical realm, there's a realm another realm. So even if all everything seems to be rosy and groovy around you, where do you want to spend eternity? Because there's a place to spend eternity. So please, I beg you, come back home. And if you have missed your way, like a prodigal child, please come back home. While the day, the sun is still shining before it's too dark. And all you can see, all you have to do is just sincerely believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you. And say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I give you my heart. I give you myself. I give you my life. From today, I receive salvation and I receive the gift of righteousness. I believe that I'm a child of God. I believe that today I have come home. I believe that I am restored back to my father. All things have passed away and all things in my life now becomes new. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for us. I'm going to 
give you words power words for you to command your day your your afternoon your evening as long as this day is still a day in whatever you're viewing from you have to say this amen and this is not just for today make sure that you're keeping record of what you're receiving because this will help you amen whatever god hears you say regardless of what god has said concerning you regardless of what i prophesy and decree into your life except you're single-minded with me in that which God is releasing, except you are amening it, and the way you receive it is by giving it voice. You see, that's why I take my time to say it clear to you. So say this after me before I pray for you. Say, Father, in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your word. I declare that from today, I am single-minded. I am single-minded. I am unwavering. I refused. I, I refuse, sorry. I refuse to be tossed to and fro by any wind of, 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 of uh, by, by the winds of doctrines of man. I make up my mind to stay my mind. I have decided to stay my mind on that which you have already done. I decide today, I'm this, I have decided today to be an increase in your kingdom. As you increase me, oh God, spiritually, mentally, financially, emotionally, maritally, Lord, I increase your kingdom. I enlarge your kingdom. My attention from today is focused on what you are doing, oh God. I am global minded. I love the humanity that Jesus died for. And I go after them to tell them that you died for them. From this day forth, I take my place in the kingdom. In the kingdom business, in the kingdom work, in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I decree over your children today. I name the name of Jesus Christ over them and upon them. Therefore, oh God, this one, they bear the mark of the blood. No one troubles them anymore. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that their eyes of understanding be opened. That they may know those things that have been truly given unto them. Father, I ask right now that in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that they be one mind, one mind, single-minded, with your purpose and plan for your kingdom. I pray that this one from today will be kingdom-minded. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you begin to stir up the waters. And stir them up, hallelujah, in the right direction. Father, set them up on the path that they must follow. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, I command their destiny and I command you day. Be aligned, be synchronized and be syncopated. With, the, with God's purpose and plan for each life here. In the name of Jesus Christ, angels begin to alter events and circumstances in this day. In favor of every man, every woman under the influence of my voice. Right now, I lift those. Father, those that are sick in the hospital, in the homes, even in their own personal home. Those who are afflicted in their spirit, soul, and body. Lord, I command that devil of affliction. Go from them in the name of Jesus Christ. I disallow affliction. I disallow pain. I disallow discomfort. I disallow disease. Be healed right now 
in your spirit. Be healed in your mind. Be healed in your soul. Be healed in your body. Be made whole. Be cleansed. I command every pain to leave your body. I command every ache to leave your body. I speak peace over you in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Day, I command you right now, shake out evil from the four corners of the earth and release the blessings. The blessings that are due unto this ones to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now declare, Father, I declare and I command my day, day lebo zagadosh. As you have released my blessing, I receive every blessing that pertains to my good life and godliness in accordance, in an alignment with God's purpose for my life. I receive my portion and I walk in the consciousness of a blessed person. I am blessed and therefore, angels, you walk with me. Angels of mercy and angels of goodness, you walk with me. And I ask right now, alter events and circumstances. Zebo Lakadosh for my good and for the good of all. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, declare I forgive all and I'm forgiven. I bless all because I'm blessed. I love all because I'm loved. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive all, I accept all because I am accepted in the beloved. And so it is. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And amen. God bless you all. God keep you. God make his face shine on you. I'll see you again tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow morning. Same time. And until then, keep living in this atmosphere of the supernatural. I love you all. God Jesus loves you most. And for those of you who just gave your life to Christ, remember to inbox me. And for those of you who have been inboxing me, God bless you. Keep it up. And as we keep walking, you'll see your life transcend hallelujah i love you all but jesus loves you most <laughs>